And we're now ready for Dikasana. Inhale, arms up over the head. As you exhale, extend forward, arms straight, raise the right leg off the floor. You're supporting only on the left leg and breathing deep. That's two. If you need to bend that supporting leg slightly, do so. Three, four, and five. The second phase of Dikasana is to open the arms up like an airplane, looking straight ahead and still breathing full and deep. That's two, three, four, five. And inhale, both arms up, exhale. Extend forward and to the other side. Left leg up, both arms extended out, full breathing, right leg strong. Two, three, four, and five. Now open the arms like an airplane, looking straight ahead. Second phase of Dikasana. Two, three, four, and five. Inhale, up, feet together, exhale, arms to your sides. We're now ready for Utita Trivikramasana. Take the right foot with both hands and lift it. Left leg is strong and the gaze is up past the right toes and breathing deep. That's two, three, four, and five. Release the right leg, feet together. Then raise the left foot. Straighten the leg, lift, and breathe deep. That's one, two, three. Stronger breath. Four, and five. Release that side. Now, we're ready for Natarajasana. You lift the right foot and grab it with two fingers of the right hand. Now take the right foot back around to the right side. Change your grip slightly so that you lift the foot up behind the back, raising the right elbow up toward the sky. Take both hands back. See if you can clasp the right foot and breathe deep. That's one, two, three, four, five. Now release, point the left hand straight ahead and keep breathing and you're still holding the right foot with the right hand. That's two, three, four, five, and release. And we're now ready for the left foot. Raise the left foot, grab the big toes with two fingers, straighten the leg, take the foot around to the side, change your grip, and taking the foot with two hands and breathing deep. That's one, two, three, four, five, and releasing the right hand, but keeping hold with the left hand and continuing to breathe. That's two, three, four, and five. Release that side and move through a vinyasa. Inhale, taking your arms up over the head. Exhale, forward. Inhale, look up. Exhale, jump back. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward facing dog position. And from there, you're going to lie down onto your belly once again. And we're ready for Raja Kapotasana. Now for Raja Kapotasana, the hands are near the chest, bend the knees, lift the chest, straighten the arms, start moving the head back toward the feet, lifting the chest high. Ideally, the feet would move onto the top of the head. Work toward that and breathe full and deep. Try to move the stretch as much as possible into the upper chest and release. Now, move upward dog, Exhale, downward facing dog position, and you're now ready for Ekpada Rajakapotasana, which is the same as Rajakapotasana, but one leg at a time with the right leg in front, bent across at about a 45 degree angle. Now, 
lift the left foot, bring it across, lift the left elbow, come across with the other hand, both elbows up, and you're breathing deep. That's two, three, once again, ideally, the head would be on top of the foot, four, and five. Release that side, move through your vinyasa, lift upward dog and downward dog and into the other side. Left leg forward, right leg pointing back. Now take the right foot and the right hand and bring the left hand across. Once again, switch your grip. Lift the chest, point the elbows up at the sky and breathe deep, moving the head toward the foot. That's two. Three, four, and five. Release that side. Move through your vinyasa. Upward dog, downward facing dog. And from the downward facing dog, you're now ready to enter your finishing sequence. So lie down on your back again. Leave your feet on the floor. Bend your knees, bringing the heels in toward your buttocks, about hips width apart. Reach toward the ankles and grab them with your hands. If that's too much, if you can't reach the ankles, leave your hands on the floor. Otherwise, hold the ankles, press the hips up in the sky, and breathe deep. Your shoulders are still on the floor. You're rolling the shoulders under, keeping the weight off of your neck. The feet remain parallel, and the breath is full. It's already three and four, keep both feet flat on the floor, and five, exhale, come down. That was a little preparation for back bend. We'll do this two more times. I either want you to repeat what we've just done, or if you wish to take it a bit further, we'll move into Urdhvadhanarasana. Take your hands under your shoulders, and then press with the hands and feet, and push your hips up to the sky, and breathe. Try to keep your feet parallel, and press the whole hand into the floor. If this is too much, remember, remain in the previous phase. Don't overdo it. And that's four. Stay with your breath. Keep it full. And five. Exhale. Lower. Pause there for a breath or two. Stay with your breathing. And then we're ready to move back up one more time, either repeating the preparation for this or Urdhvadhanarasana. Deep breathing. One two, three, four, and five. Exhale, come down. Bring your knees up into your chest and give yourself a big hug. Pull them into your body. Roll around on the lower back a little bit, giving a counter stretch to the back bend. Inhale and exhale, rolling forward and back. Come right up to a sitting position. Straighten your legs and move into Paschimottanasana forward bend. Just give a little counter stretch to that back bend. Great. Now release. Jump back. Move through a vinyasa, upward dog, downward dog. Come all the way back through. Lie down on your back. And we're ready for Sarvangasana, the shoulder stand. Bend your knees, lift your feet, lift your hips, and support your hips with your hands. That's the first phase. This is called shoulder stand. Remember, it's not a seventh cervical stand. So roll the shoulders under. If you can move further, you would now lift the hips higher so that your hands would move down your back until the body becomes vertical and toes point straight up at the sky. Keep some weight in your elbows and across the shoulders. Try to keep the seventh cervical, which is the neck lifting off of the floor. Keep the breath full and deep. We're going to stay here for a few breaths longer than the previous poses. So enjoy it. If you need to back off from the pose, please do so. Otherwise, keep the breath full and deep. Strong breathing. And now lower the feet toward halasana position, the plow position, taking the feet down on the head side of your body. Release the hands from your back, lace your fingers together and pull them toward the floor. Try to keep the spine lifting and still trying to keep the neck off the floor. If this is too much, back the hips away a bit 
so it's not quite so extreme. Otherwise, the breath is still full and deep. That's about three, four, and five. Now, bend the knees. Let the knees come down toward your ears. Release your hands, but let them be flat on the floor behind you, right where they were. The breath is still full. Karnapidasana, strong breath. And five. Now move all the way back up to Sarvangasana, all the way back up to shoulder stand. Now either just cross your legs and support your knees with your hands, or eventually you would place the legs in lotus position, supporting your knees with your hands. Stay in whatever phase is appropriate to you, and once again, full deep breathing. That should already be about three, four. This is like an inverted Padmasana position. And five. Now lower your legs toward your chest, reach around the thighs, and clasp your hands, and continue to breathe deep. Moving into Pindasana position. That's two three, four, and five. Release your arms, place them on the floor behind you, palms down. As you roll the hips down, use your abdominal muscles in your hands to resist as you lower. Then the hips will touch. Keep your legs crossed or stay in lotus until your feet come all the way down to the floor. Now press your elbows into the floor, lift your chest and roll your head under. If you're not in lotus position, if your legs are crossed, your hands would be holding on the thighs and pulling to assist the lift in the chest. Otherwise, if you are in lotus position, your hands would be holding the feet. You would be pulling the feet to assist that lift of the chest. This is Matsyasana, the fish posture, a nice counter stretch to the shoulder strand. And that's three, deeper breath, four, and five. Now, we're ready to move into Uttana Padasana. Release the feet from lotus or from cross legs. Lift the feet off the floor. Straighten your arms, palms together, pointing in the direction of the feet. The chest is still lifted. If that's too much to have the feet off the floor, you would leave the feet on the floor. Otherwise, the feet and the hands are extended. The breath is full. That's four and five. Once again, you have the option of rolling back out of this through your chakrasana. If that's too much, just sit up and jump back or wait. Moving through the vinyasa, if you've jumped back or rolled out and coming back forward onto your knees. In a kneeling position, you're now ready for shirshasana, headstand position. So, cross your arms holding the elbows in your hands, lowering the elbows onto the floor. That's how far apart the elbows should be. Now take your hands out, lace the fingers together. The top of your head should come to the floor, the back of your head cradled in the hands. Even though this is called shirshasana of the headstand, truly the most weight should be on your arms. Now keep your elbows from rolling out to the sides and straighten your legs and begin to walk the feet toward your head. If you don't want to go all the way to headstand, you could pause in half of a headstand, leaving your feet on the floor. Otherwise, you would now bring your feet further toward the head, bend your knees, and move right up into shirshasana, headstanding position. Keep the weight in that nice triangular base, that base that moves across the forearms from the elbows and across the hands and the very top of your head. The majority of the weight should be distributed across the arms, the head being used for balance. Keep lifting all the way up through the balls of the feet. Keep the breath full and deep. Shirshasana also will hold a bit longer than the other postures. It's a very therapeutic pose.
Keep the breath full and deep. If you need to come out of this posture at any time, by all means do so. Otherwise, remain in the pose. If you do have to come out of it, if your feet are still on the floor, you would just bend your knees and sit back on your heels. If you're still up in headstand and want to come out, you would bend the knees lower and then sit back on your heels and pause in child's pose. Otherwise, you might still be in headstand. Now we'll try a couple of variations for those of you still in headstand. Bend at the waist, lowering your feet halfway to the floor with the legs still straight, and pause there. Full deep breathing. Hold that just a couple more breaths. Three, four, and five. Now inhale and come all the way back up. One more as you exhale, lowering the feet toward the floor, this time just before they touch the floor. Inhale, come all the way back up to headstand, and then exhale and lower all the way down. Bend your knees, sit back on your heels, take your arms back by your sides, and pause in child's pose. Stay there for a few breaths. You don't want to sit up too fast after the inverted postures. So stay there. The breath is nice and full. Good. Now from there, take one more vinyasa. Jump back. Move through your upward facing dog and your downward facing dog. And come all the way back through. Sitting position. We're ready for the final three poses of the primary series of Ashtanga Yoga. They're all done in lotus position. If that's not possible, just sit with cross legs. Or you might sit in lotus or half lotus. If you're in lotus position, reach behind your back and clasp the feet. If your legs are just crossed, just reach behind your back. Baddha Padmasana. Lift the chest, inhale. Exhale, extend forward, bring your head toward the floor. Once you can reach your head to the floor, you would then work your chin toward the floor. Either way, the breath is full and deep. Stay with the breathing. This is Yoga Mudrasana. Now inhale, sit up again, keeping Baddha Padmasana, bound lotus, and release. Take your hands to your knees, your classic yogi posture thumb and first finger touching, the chest lifted and open, the spine straight, the breath full and deep. You can drop your chin toward your chest. We're going to stay here a bit longer as well. Be aware of your locks, Mula Bandha, Uddiyana Bandha. Draw the air in long flowing streams in each nostril totally filling the lungs, and as you exhale, completely emptying the lungs, using the abdomen and your locks to further empty the lungs. Don't force the breath, but allow it to become greater. Allow the breath to fill the lungs further by lifting with the intercostal muscles, the muscles between the ribs, and as you exhale, you can use the abdominal contraction a bit to assist the air out of the lungs. Don't use too much effort, though. Keep the focus on the sound, the quality of your breath. Full breathing. As you're breathing deep, think beyond the lungs. You're filling the entire body every time you inhale. Strong breathing. Very good. That should be about 10 breaths. Okay, we're ready for the final pose, Tolasana. Place your hands beside your hips. Now, we're going to lift up in a moment, and I want you to hold this for as long as you possibly can, or 100 breaths, whichever comes first. This is a powerful posture. It will engage all of your locks. 
Even if you cannot achieve liftoff, that's okay. Just press your hands into the floor, make the effort to lift, feel the abdomen working, and lift. Your gaze looks straight ahead, full deep breathing. I'm going to count to 15. Try to hold it for as long as you can. One, two. If you need to come down, please do so. Three, four. Keep the breath full and deep. Five, six, Seven. If you've already come down, that's fine, but keep breathing full and deep. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Full breath. Look straight ahead. Thirteen. Hold it. Fourteen. One more good breath. And fifteen. Exhale. Come down. Pause for a moment there, sitting up straight and breathing full and deep. It's okay if you weren't able to hold for the full 15. It will give you something to work towards. If you were able to hold for 15, then hold longer. Try to increase it over time. We're now ready for deep relaxation. So, lie down on your back. Straighten the legs. Let your palms roll open toward the sky. Let the feet roll out to the sides. And completely let go from head to toe. This posture is just as important as all of the previous ones. It gives the body a chance to assimilate all of the energy which you've accumulated, the life force you've extracted within the breathing, the prana. It gives a chance for the body to absorb it and to channel it throughout the entire system. Release any effort in the breath. Let it go. Let the body sink into the earth. Just imagine the muscles now melting away from the bones, coming into a liquid state and allowing them to just seep into the earth, leaving the skeletal system there and feel it settling into alignment. Feel a bit of space between all of the joints. Feel some space between the toes, the bones and the feet, and the ankles. Feel the knees, a bit of space between the knee joints, the hips and the pelvis. All of the vertebrae of the spine settling into alignment the fingers, the hands and wrists, the elbows and the shoulders settling into alignment, the cervical spine, the neck, relaxing and lengthening. And now release all of that. So that the physical body is gone melting into the earth. And you're left with only a subtle body, the subtle energetic self, the home and the seat of prana, the life force, the life-giving force that is present within you and the world around you. The inner world and outer world are connected through this prana. Awareness of this connection within and without is the soul of yoga. The breath is the avenue for this connection. So keep your awareness in that subtle self. It may feel something like a flow of energy through the body. If there are any areas you feel are areas of weakness, you could send that energy there. Or just simply use it to revitalize, recharge, and renew the entire system. When you're practicing yoga, you're bathing every cell in oxygen. Just as when you bathe the body 
under a shower, you're cleansing the external body. When you're breathing deep and practicing yoga, you're bathing every cell in the body in oxygen. You're calming the nervous system and relaxing the mind. Allow this time in Shavasana to absorb all of the benefits from the practice. You've opened the channels from the postures. You've refined the pranic flow in the body from the breath and the locks. Now is the time to revitalize and to feel that deep, calm place inside and to remain there in that space and to know that it's always there. Now I'm going to leave you for a couple minutes in silence to allow you to take yourself on your own journey and after a couple of minutes, I'll come back, taking you out of the deep relaxation. You can begin to come back now by just moving your fingers and toes 